For this demonstration, um, we're going to make a bracelet, but it will also double as earrings, and also you could make this as um, a necklace. So it's it's multifunctional. We've got um, the two paisley duos. Duos are double holes, so they have the two holes going that way across. So going that way across the. Um, piece and then we've got the ginkgo beads which go front to uh, top to bottom and we've got some of the 11s so that's what we're going to be using to make it so we're going to move that to one side so i've started off i put a stop bead on and that's simply you just put the bead on fetch your thread through feed it through again and then that acts as a stopper bead so you can move it but it won't automatically slide so just pop that on then I've put I've gone through the bottom of a ginkgo then we're going through the narrow end but the convex side so the 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 bulgy outy side of the paisley rather than the inner curve we've gone through the top end on all three beads so we've got one of the um champagne two of the blue and then through the ginkgo at this stage they will twist around don't worry about it so we now need to go up and over the top this is quite a nice simple design we're going to go up and over the top so i'm going to put three beads on and we're going to do a little um pico at the top so the three beads will get us from the hole to the point then we want the four beads for the pico slide those down now this is where you do want to put these on the right side so you want all of those it doesn't matter so much about your ginkgo but you want all of the paisleys fanning out slide those down and um, if you want to use one of the yellows to to highlight or or as a different color then you don't have to count because that's i want to go back into the fourth so i've got three beads one two three four thought it had too many there Take that one off. Now I'm holding them there just to keep a bit of tension. So I want to come back through that fourth one. So the middle bead of the seven. And I'm going to pull them down. If you hold it in place, you're more likely to get a better um, little pico. So you create your little pico. It's like a little cross at the top. These all fan round. So expecting that. We're going to... Add another three of the 11s on. One, two, three. Come back through the other side of the ginkgo bead, coming back down. So this is this is forming our little pico at the top. We then want to come down to the bottom. Now then we're going to turn that ginkgo the right way. So we're going to go now. We want to be on the inside curve. So on the concave part of the bead, and you want your two blue and your gold champagne and then through your ginkgo now the bracelet and the earrings or the practice pieces are in two slightly different um shows so on the bracelet i've got the two blue then the gold at the top and on this i've got the two blue on the top and the gold at the bottom it doesn't matter you can mix and match them if you want um that's that's the difference you get it, do, it, it, it doesn't matter it's up to you how you want to do them so we need to do a ginkgo, a uh, ginkgo, a little pico at the bottom. So we only need we only need two to go along the bottom here. So we're going to add two on, then our four. I tend to 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 always sort of break down when I'm counting beads, if I'm doing them four sections. So I would never say I'll just put six on. I I want the two, then I want the four, and then it, it keeps me focused where I'm going. So I'm going to go back through the fourth bead down fetch that out of the way and then pull it if it doesn't go into quite the right shape just reposition it and you'll be able to tweak those into position so we want another two on this side to slide those down now i'm going to take the stopper bead off and i'm going to tie a knot so i'm going to make sure those two beads go down and i want the knot just be careful how you pull it because you don't want that not to slide up those beads. You want to like that. You want to make sure those beads are 
above the knot and now it's gone it's not going to go back come on get back in there there we go so your first one once you've got it there you're all right so do two or three overhand knots and that has got it into position you don't want to be too tight like that because it pushes it out of shape you've got to have room for those beads to go so just make sure you leave it a little bit of a wiggle room so from here we're now going to that 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 as it stands is um unstable i'm going to leave that thread till later so we're going to put three beads on from the rounded end of the ginkgo so they'll end up with the same number of beads so we're going to go three beads into there so you're going into the outer hole of the paisley then a bead between each of the outer holes of the paisley there we go and then we want a couple of beads to get us back to the pico at the bottom if you're going to turn these into earrings then you don't want a pico you just want to loop that end well you can to be fair you can do the pico so i'm just going to cut across there to come back down the other side and then you've nearly finished your your base units one two and in just, there we go put those into position Right, once you get back to the start, so at the at this end we're adding three beads because there's only two, and at this end we've added two because there was three to begin with. So you're ending up with five beads before you get to the pico bit. Okay, once you get back to the bottom, okay, we now want to connect these. So we're going to connect them. All the ginkgos are going to face in the right direction and see how these join up these two parts of the of the pico actually nestle in place together and that's the, so easy to join them so we're going to go up through the bottom bead and then you have to go make sure you're going in the right way so if i want it there i need to be coming this direction through the top bead so i'm going to pop through. and again it, it it's worth laying them all out because then they're all going in the same direction if they're all in the same direction and you get one in the wrong direction you're going to you're going to spot that it's going to it's going to show then you want to go through not through the top but through the bottom beads on the outside of the um paisley bead feed through and then you want to come back in this direction through this ginkgo so we're just gonna feed that through now i'm using a size 10 needle and it's going through they've 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 had several passes of the thread through these these um 11s but it, it's coping all right with it now i'm going to go back through there Okay, then I'd feed it through to the end. I would probably tie it off here. This one is already tied off, so I can just thread through there and trim. I never trim in that point because it weakens the knot. So carry on feeding through to a place where you could you could take it to there and not there if you wanted again. Feed the threads through and trim, and then you're ready for your next. There we go. Then you're ready for your next um, section to be added. Make them as long or as short. Like I say, if you want to make that as part of a necklace, it would look lovely. It would look lovely as a choker. Um, as an earring, instead of the pico, just make a little loop at one end and the pico at the other. And then you've got some earrings as well. So very, very versatile motif to use. Do enjoy. <laughs>